Now that we have described the considerations needed when assessing assignment to conditions in randomized designs, we will turn to the considerations needed when assessing assignment to conditions in quasi-experimental designs. Recall that QEDs assign units to conditions using an uncontrolled assignment process. And the groups in QEDs must be distinct, meaning the groups are composed of non-overlapping units. Group formation in QEDs can occur before or after collecting outcome data, and researchers can use many different approaches to form groups, including convenient samples, groups formed for another purpose, or using matching techniques to match participants to similar non-participants. QEDs that use convenient samples for group formation are eligible for WWC review. Consider an example where researchers are evaluating the impact of participation in student dance on students' class attendance. All students who currently participate in dance are designated as the intervention group, and then students who are not currently enrolled in dance but are enrolled in music or art courses are designated as the comparison group. This type of QED, where groups are formed using an uncontrolled assignment process, is eligible for WWC review as a QED. Recall that the highest possible research rating that QEDs can receive is meets WWC standards with reservations. The reason for this is that in QEDs, groups could differ on both observable and unobservable characteristics. This means that even if a QED demonstrates equivalence on observable characteristics, there may be differences between groups in unobservable characteristics that could introduce bias into the intervention impact estimates. This potential bias means that the WWC has less confidence in the validity of intervention impact estimates from QED studies so they are not eligible to receive the highest research rating. When assessing assignment to conditions in QEDs, reviewers will again need to assess whether assignment to conditions occurred at the individual level or the cluster level. For QEDs, the WWC generally defines the unit of assignment as the largest study unit that contains members of only one condition. For example, Imagine study authors had compared student outcomes in schools implementing a dropout prevention program versus comparison schools. The unit of assignment in this example is schools because each school only has intervention students or only comparison students. This study is a cluster level assignment study. In contrast, if some schools have both intervention and comparison students, then the unit of assignment would be students and the study would be an individual level assignment study. WWC reviewers can ask themselves some key questions when reviewing group design studies and assessing assignment to conditions. The first question is, do the authors say they used random assignment or call the study an RCT? If the answer is yes, Reviewers should check to see whether each unit appears to have had a non-zero probability of assignment to each condition. Then, reviewers should determine whether the authors use different assignment probabilities for different groups. If so, does the analysis account for that? Paying close attention to how the authors describe the group formation beyond the labels they use, as well as answering these key questions, will help determine if the study had well-executed random assignment or whether the study had compromised random assignment or is a QED. In other words, the way that study authors describe group formation is often more important than the labels they use. Paying attention to how the authors describe group formation will help reviewers determine whether the study is eligible for meets WWC standards without reservations. Reviewers should ensure that the description of the group formation reflects the type of design the study authors say they used. For example, study authors may claim to use an RCT design, but in reading the study, a reviewer might discover that the process they used was not truly random. We have a matching game to help you practice what you've learned. In this game, you will match a phrase in the left column with a phrase in the right column. Okay. The first phrase in the left column is randomized controlled trial. Does it match to choice A, B, or C? 
Feel free to pause the video at this point so that you can read through the answer choices first. The answer is B. Researchers flip a coin to determine whether they are in the intervention condition or the comparison condition. This answer is correct because it describes a completely random process. The coin has two sides, there are two groups, and participants can go into either one. The second phrase in the left column is quasi-experimental design. We're left with choice A or C as options. The answer is C. Researchers use students in existing first, third, and fifth period algebra classes as the intervention group, and students in the second, fourth, and sixth period algebra classes in the comparison group. There are two distinct groups, and the study does not use random assignment, which means this is an eligible quasi-experimental design. That means the last phrase in the left column, not eligible for review, matches to choice A. Researchers examined the fall and spring test scores of a seventh grade physical science class. This is an ineligible design because there is no comparison group. The seventh grade science class represents one group. The study looks at the same group before and after the intervention, which researchers often call a pre-post design. In this type of design, scores may increase between pre-test and post-test for many reasons, and many of those reasons are not related to the intervention. These kinds of pre-post designs with no comparison group are not eligible for review under the WWC group design standards. Time for your first knowledge check. A study assesses the effects of a new curriculum for elementary school students by examining differences between school level test scores in the fall before the intervention and in the spring after implementation of the intervention. Is this study a randomized controlled trial, a quasi-experimental design study, or neither? You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The correct answer is C, neither. The study is ineligible for review under the WWC group design standards. There is only one group in the study. The study examines scores of the group in the fall and the scores of the same group in the spring. Without a distinct comparison group, we worry that normal maturation in the students might affect the results and bias any impact estimates. Students know more as they get older and learn more. Without a comparison group, we can't tell whether the intervention is truly causing students' test scores to improve or if students are just learning more as they get older. Knowledge Check 2. An RCT study estimates program impact separately for subsamples with different assignment probabilities and then averages the subsample specific impacts to calculate an overall program impact estimate. Would the WWC accept this method of accounting for the different random assignment probabilities? Your choices are A, yes, this is an acceptable approach, B, no, the authors must use dummy variables for the different subsamples in a regression model or use inverse probability weights. C, no, the WWC would need to ask the authors for the subsample specific results. Or D, there is not enough information provided to determine whether this approach is acceptable. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The correct answer is A. This is an appropriate approach. The study used different assignment probabilities and needs to account for them in the analysis. According to the WWC, estimating separate impacts and averaging them is one of three acceptable ways to account for different assignment probabilities. Knowledge Check 3. To evaluate a mobile app-based reading intervention, researchers select a class of 20 students. The researchers select 10 students at random to use the program, and the other 10 students participate in normal class activities. Would the WWC consider this study A, a randomized controlled trial, B, a quasi-experimental design study, or C, 
a study that is not eligible for review under the WWC group design standards. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The answer is A. This is an RCT. The study randomly assigned all 20 students in the experiment. Assignment was entirely by chance, and each unit had a non-zero probability of assignment to each group. The study text does not provide any reason to question the randomization process, so we can conclude that this is an RCT. The study is not a QED because it used a random process to create the groups. This is an RCT, so it is eligible for review. Note that the initial selection of the 20 students to participate in random assignment has no bearing on the eligibility of this study as an RCT. It does not matter how the researchers identify the population of students subject to randomization. Knowledge Check 4. Researchers evenly group 90 schools into urban, suburban, and rural schools. From each of these groups of 30 schools, the researchers randomly selected four schools. In each of the groups of four schools, the authors randomly assigned schools to one of the following conditions, instruction at home, instruction at home and school, and no instruction control. The WWC would consider this study, A, a randomized controlled trial that used stratified or blocked assignment, B, a quasi-experimental design study, or C, a study that is not eligible for review under the WWC group design standards. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The correct answer is A. The researchers used a stratified randomization process. They stratified schools based on the area type and then randomly selected four schools from each of those strata. Lastly, the study authors randomly assigned those schools to one of four conditions. So the study assigned units entirely by chance, and each unit had a non-zero probability of assignment to each group. The study is not a QED because it used a random process to create the groups. It is an RCT, so it is eligible for review. Note that the authors randomly chose the four schools in each strata that would be subject to random assignment. If the researchers had instead used a non-random method to choose those schools before random assignment, or if the schools had volunteered before random assignment, the study would still be considered an RCT. This is because it does not matter how the researchers identify the population of units subject to randomization. Knowledge Check 5. An author uses data from the Early Childhood Longitudinal Study Kindergarten Cohort to estimate the impact of preschool attendance on academic performance outcomes in kindergarten. In these data, some children attended preschool and some did not. The author compared outcomes between these two groups. The WWC would consider this study, A, a randomized controlled trial that used stratified or blocked assignment, B, a quasi-experimental design study, C, a study that is not eligible for review under the WWC group design standards. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The correct answer is B. This is a QED. The two groups are not the result of random assignment. The study authors compared two distinct naturally occurring groups, children who did and did not attend preschool. The study did not use random assignment to form the groups. It is QED and is therefore eligible for review under the WWC group design standards. Knowledge Check 6. Researchers randomized students into a college writing intervention group or business as usual comparison group after students agreed to participate in the study. Three students assigned to the intervention condition transferred into one of the class sections assigned to the comparison condition following random assignment. The researchers included the transfer students in the intervention group when analyzing the data. The WWC would consider this study which of the following? A, a randomized controlled trial, B, a quasi-experimental design study, or C, 
a randomized controlled trial with compromised random assignment. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. The correct answer is A. This is a randomized controlled trial because students were assigned to conditions randomly. Although three students changed conditions after random assignment, the integrity of the randomization is not compromised because the authors analyzed students based on the condition they were originally assigned. If authors analyzed the data based on the condition students were randomly assigned, regardless of whether they received the intervention, randomization is not compromised. Now let's check seven. Researchers are examining the effects of a new professional development program for elementary school teachers intended to foster a positive classroom environment. The researchers randomly assigned teachers to the intervention group or a business as usual condition. The researchers gathered outcome data on teacher classroom practices, teacher satisfaction, and student positive behaviors in each teacher's classroom. The author compared outcomes between the intervention and business as usual groups. Which of the following is true? A. All findings from this study should be reviewed as an individual assignment study. B. The findings for teacher classroom practices and teacher satisfaction should be reviewed as an individual level assignment study and the findings for student positive behaviors should be reviewed as a cluster level assignment study. C, all findings from this study should be reviewed as a cluster level assignment study. You may want to pause the video while you think about your answer. B is the correct answer. Depending on the finding under review, this can be either an individual level or a cluster level assignment study. For the outcomes that measure teachers, the unit of measurement is the teacher. The unit of assignment is also the teacher, so the unit of assignment and measurement are the same, and findings should be reviewed as an individual level assignment study. For the student behavior outcome, the unit of measurement is students, but the unit of assignment is teachers. Given that the unit of assignment is larger than the unit of measurement, the findings from the student behavior measure should be reviewed as a cluster level assignment study. This concludes the fifth module in the WWC Group Design Standards Training. Let's review what we discussed in this module. We discussed the two research designs that are eligible for review under the WWC Group Design Standards, randomized controlled trials and quasi-experimental designs. We discussed how to identify eligible RCTs with well-executed randomization, as well as how to identify eligible QEDs. And we discussed how to determine the level of assignment to conditions. Remember that you can access all of the resources mentioned in this module on the WWC website, whatworks.ed.gov.